Welcome Awakening Hearts. I'm your host, Denny Van, and I am so excited today to be speaking with Lana McGarra. Hey, welcome, darling. How are you? I am so delighted to be with you today. I'm excited. I'm reading over your bio and it's like, holy cow, okay, 40 titles through traditional publishing that you were a ghostwriter for, uh, millions of books sold. Lena is a spiritual luminary and energy healing. I'd like to learn more about that. And she's been teaching how to write fiction for 20 years. That's interesting because most teach nonfiction, right? Coming up with those characters and stuff like that. Okay, so how do you teach fiction? Very cool. And writing under a book author named Rosie Dow. I'd like to know more about Rosie. And won the, the Christie Award. Excellent. Would love to learn more about that. So darling, so many things going on. Uh, as our listeners are having awakening hearts and, um, you know, wanting to learn more about this spiritual journey, what got you on this spiritual journey? Wow. I, I guess with everybody, it's, it's a long, it's a long story, right? <laughs> we want to cut to the chase here. Um, I was a pastor's wife for 30 years. And during those 30 years, well, actually all my life, you know, even before that, I knew stuff. And I would say this and that's going to happen. Just, you know, part of conversation, not a big dramatic announcement or anything. Or I would say something like, that person is trouble in the church. That person is trouble. You need to watch out for them. And my husband, my ex-husband, he would just brush it away. Oh, uh, you're just making it up. You don't really know. But, you know, after a while, guess what? It would come true. So I always had that, but I never really was willing. I was too afraid. I was you know, fear, the fear from the church really just comes through you and was scared of uh, spiritual gifts. So I didn't really go into that until after I left him in 2009, I left my husband, end up in a divorce and my daughter got sick. Now, between the time that I left him and the time that my daughter got sick, I was already starting to do energy healing the emotion code, EFT tapping. Uh, this was coming to me. I really wasn't seeking it, but it was coming to me in these gentle ways. People I would meet at these events and, and it was so gentle and easy. And I keep saying gentle because I was so scared that I wouldn't do anything if it scared me, right? So these things are so calm and understated, but they were helping. And so that really like opened a little crack in the dike for me. When my daughter got sick, she was sick with Lyme's disease and she was und undiagnosed for five years. So she was getting sicker and sicker. And I started getting desperate because we weren't even getting a diagnosis uh, from the doctors. And we went to doctor after doctor and started to turn into these alternative healing methods, energy healing, and hypnosis and other things. And, and then my daughter started getting interested in it. And she was way more brave than I was. <laughs> and so we were together, she was living with me at, at some point, she moved in, she was too sick to live on her own anymore. And uh, so we got our heads together. And boy, did we ever come up with a lot of trouble. <laughs> So that's how I got started. Very nice. I loved that you talked about being too afraid, you know, um, the fear of your spiritual gifts that you just didn't, didn't look at them. When did you start looking at them? In 2018, we moved to a new area. We moved to central Delaware. There was a doctor there that I wanted to get my daughter closer to him. And so we moved there. And then I looked on Meetup and I saw this uh, sort of a meditation group, a women's group. So I started attending and some of the women in that group wanted to get together for expand your, forget what the name was that we, you know, the word, but it was expand your abilities, expand your intuitive, maybe it was intuition. And so I agreed to host that. So 
once a month, these six women would come to my house, my daughter and I, and being in that group showed, showed us so much because there was different kinds of modalities represented. It was, there was a, a shaman who did spiritual journeys. There was someone who did tarot. Uh, there was someone who did animal communication. And there was all this like diversity of different gifts. And then one person did house clearings from old energy. And she told us we had a ghost. And surprisingly, I wasn't afraid of the ghost. <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't scared at all. Um, he was a little old man who had died in the house and he was very respectful and very kind and calm and wasn't spooky at all. Um, <clears throat> but that, that really started me on a journey of, you know, this isn't as scary as they told me it was going to be. Now, sometimes I had my doubts. Uh, I can remember after a meeting uh, and all the women left. And I looked up at the ceiling and went, am I going to hell? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't feel like I am. <laughs> but am I really? All you know? of the programming coming up to the surface going, no, no, red flag, red flag, right? But intuition saying, this is the way, this is the way. Yes. I just kept following feeling better. And so if I did something that made me feel better, I thought, okay, if I, if it was wrong, I'd feel worse. And so I just kept following, you know, step by step. Now, today I'm a psychic medium. I channel, um, I have spiritual gifts of discernment. Uh, I come through with messages about what's happening on the planet, things like that. So things have really changed in the last 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you mentioned in your bio that um, you reinvented yourself at age 52. Talk a little bit about what reinventing yourself is and what does that mean? Oh, wow. That was a complete identity change. Before, uh, it's, it's a divorce, you know, that was the watershed. The divorce was the dividing line. And I was married for 30 years to a very dominant person who controlled every area of my life. He would look me over every time I left the house to make sure I was dressed okay. I mean, that's the extent of domination. And so before I was writing books, I was writing novels, I was getting published, but I was very timid. I, I, was, I had my hair in the same style that I <clears throat> had worn since college. Uh, 30 years later, right? And it was because I didn't want to be seen. I was so scared of being seen. And I had no voice. Literally, I couldn't sing. I, I couldn't shout very loud. Uh, my, my fifth chakra was jammed shut. And so that was before. And then after, I went through about a five-year period and suddenly, you know, I just started expanding and I became outgoing. My personality was outgoing. And as I was going through this, I realized, hey, I've been stifling my personality all this time. This is who I really am. So I had some surprises. And then once I was, you know, out of the box, then I would say outrageous things in a crowd. <laughs> And I had to kind of learn how to, you know, adjust and balance. Rain it in, rain it in. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. A... I love when you said following feeling better. I just love that. Just, okay, that doesn't feel good. That's not the way to go. Oh, this feels good. Uh, this feels better. This actually makes me feel better. This is the way I'm going to go. So um, tell me more about what happened um, to launch you in the career that you're in now? Oh, wow. It was such a God story. It was so, so divinely orchestrated. I, in that five-year period, was trying to figure out how to earn a living. I was a stay-at-home mom for 30 years. I had no resume. And when I went to get a job, I mean, I'm a 50-something-year-old woman with no resume. Who's going to hire me? You know, Target? 
Walmart, that was what I was looking at. And I couldn't earn a living. I didn't even pay my rent on what I could make there. So I started a marketing company and I knew how to market. I had written a lot of books. I knew how to market that. And I knew, you know, some things about that. So I was getting marketing clients and I went to this business conference in Las Vegas, which was a pretty big deal. And I was, you know, schmoozing around, seeing who needed help. And it was a long event. It was like five days. This is on day number four or something like this. Like, I was tired. It was the end of the time. And I was standing in the lobby in, the, in this big hotel in Vegas, this eight foot flower arrangement with this giant table in the middle of the lobby. And we were just standing there kind of propped against the table waiting for the shuttle bus. And this woman next to me, she looks over and she's like, what do you do? You know, I was like, oh my God, I, I don't want to answer that again, you know. Um, don't want to be seen, don't want to be seen, don't want to be seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to get to my room, you know, that's it. And I said, oh, I'm here for marketing and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, what do you do? She said, I'm a book broker. I connect people with ghostwriters. I mean, it was one of those moments. I said, oh my God, I am an author. I have 27. I, at that point, I had 27 published books. And I've been thinking about ghostwriting. She said, oh, great. Here's my card. I'm looking for ghostwriters. I have more clients than I have ghostwriters for. And that started our relationship. And I went full-time ghostwriting in 2015. And I've been ghostwriting ever since. And she is one of my main supplies for clients. And so everything changed for me in a period of about a three-minute conversation. I always tell people, if you don't know what you're going to do, or you don't know how you're going to break in or whatever, you know, get clear, align yourself with the universe, align yourself with your purpose, things will open. You know, I didn't have to knock down a single door to get there. And now I'm living the life of my dreams, writing for other people, writing my own stuff. Uh, this is the space for me. And what changed from before when you were afraid and had that fear of even acknowledging your spiritual gifts to where you are now? Little by little, step by step, I would take one step and go, I feel better. Or this isn't scary at all. What's so scary about this? Um, and so I just basically tiptoed my way out of the fear zone. And now in my, the space I am now, I realize that fear is actually an energetic body that follows us around like pig pen, you know, the old Snoopy cartoon with pig pen's got the dust following them all around. Well, fear is an energetic body that follows you around based on your programming. And so whether no matter what your situation or your location, you'll find something to be afraid of because fear is following you. And when I was able to dispel the fear body, my life completely turned around. Fear is an, an imagination. It's selecting and choosing the worst case scenario instead of living in the moment and choosing the best case scenario. So it's a construct. It is not real. I, it feels real, <laughs> you know, in the, when you're in it, but you can, you can dispel those those constructs and you don't have to let fear follow you around and torture you as long as you are ready to let it go. I love that you used the word fear is, is a programming. It follows you around. We're programmed to be fearful. And you also use the words dispel the fear body. So we talk about awakening hearts reprogramming themselves to rather than react to fear they respond to it so I love that we're so in alignment with that that is fantastic 
And you have um, two new titles coming out in 2023. Are they out already or yet to come out? Tell us about them. Oh, thank you so much for asking that. I had one that just came out. It's called Reaping the Whirlwind. It won the Christie Award. And the Christie Award is a national award where certain publishers will submit their best works to the Christie Committee. And then the Christie Committee selects a, a group of judges from the industry. So the reason I'm telling you that is this is a high level contest. It's not, it's not texting all your friends and saying, vote for me. This was an, an industry driven award and when I won that award, I couldn't believe it. I mean, you could have knocked me down. I mean, they almost had to help me to the stage to accept, you know, my Oscar, you know, kind of felt like that. Um, so I'm, I just so grateful that I received that recognition and that book, Reaping the Whirlwind, uh, just came out in June and it's a re-release. It was out before, but the publisher went out of business. And so I found a new publisher to pick it up and, and the new book is out. It's, it's so, um, it's like my magnum opus. <laughs> I've written 43 titles now. And this is the one that's like my magnum opus. Um, 16 of my books are self, are uh, not self-published, but um, ghostwritten. And the rest of them are under my name. Uh, Rosie Dow and Lana McCare are the two names that I use. And then I have another book that's coming out. It's called um, The Englewood Medium, Shaken But Not Stirred. And it's coming out early next year. The publisher's you know, process is stretched out and I'm waiting for that final release date right now. It's on the last stage of being ready to give me a date. That one is about six women who meet every Wednesday in the back of a bookstore and to talk about their intuition. It's really a mirror of the group of women that met in my, in my house. I love them so much. We met for over a year together that I actually set up a novel with this ensemble of women. And the book Shaken But Not Stirred is about one of them who has a stalker and she doesn't know who it is. Fascinating. So that feels more like um, fiction. Yes, yes. Um, Reaping the Whirlwind is a historical novel. So it is technically still fiction, but it is based on a real event, the Scopes Trial in 1925, where I put in a fiction mystery. I write mysteries, all, no matter what the genre, there's gonna be a mystery. So that has a fiction mystery, but a real events, real people. And Shake of a Not Stirred is total, uh, joy <laughs> just so much fun you have the metaphysical uh people the tarot readers and the woo woo and then you have the skeptics the medical doctor and and so forth who don't believe a word of it and uh i just had so much fun writing that book i can't wait to get it in my hands now <laughs> very cool that's exciting very exciting so where can our awakening hearts find you on social media I'm all over social media. If you just uh, go in and put in Lana Makara, you'll probably find me on Instagram. I love it when people DM me from Instagram. Don't worry if, if you know, you're just hearing and we never met. Still, DM me on Instagram. Uh, my name is Lana Makara with a number two. My old account got closed and I put the number two so I could get back in there. Very cool. We'll be leaving links to those in the description for sure so that um, you can go check her out. And then any um, words of advice for our awakening hearts who are listening? Wow, there's so much, but I think what Spirit wants me to say today is follow feeling better. If you eat a meal and an hour later you feel bad, don't do it again. If you eat a meal and you feel great, there's your sweet spot. If you okay. do some spiritual practice and you feel better, stick with that. Just feel better. It's okay to feel better. It is okay to feel better. Oh my gosh. It totally is okay to feel better. Thank you for saying that. Perfect. 
Perfect. Perfect ending to an awesome interview. Thank you so much, darling. And Awakening Hearts, if you are new to the podcast or the YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And let me know in the comments what you loved and what you would love more of. And in the meantime, keep being amazing. Mm -hmm.